After studying this module, you shall be able to know what is derivative and the purpose of its existence. Learn various types of derivatives and their features and benefits. Know the methodology used in pricing of future contract. Learn the clearing and settlement procedure of futures contract at National Stock Exchange. Analyze various applications used in future contract. The word derivative is derived from mathematics which refers to a variable that has been derived from another variable. In simple sense, derivative has no independent value of its own. Its value is obtained from the value of an underlying asset. For example, curd is a derivative of milk or similarly, measure of temperature is derived from the measurement of foreign heat. In financial world, a derivative is a financial product which derives its value from another asset. For example, Sensex is a derivative of 30 shares at Bombay Stock Exchange and Nifty is a derivative of 50 shares at NSE. Derivatives have come to existence from the need to manage the risk rising from movements in markets beyond our control. Derivatives are used to shift risk and therefore act as a form of insurance for some risks, management and can obtain protection from an insurance company, fire loss or profit loss of stock, marine insurance, etc. However, for some other risks like adverse exchange rate movements, risk associated with rise, decline in the price of commodity or stocks, the instruments that can be used to provide such protection are called derivative instruments. Derivatives are generally used as an instrument to hedge risk but can also be used for speculative purposes. In India, derivatives come into existence when Professor Dr. L. C. Gupta committee in 1998 came out strongly in favor of introduction of financial derivatives in order to provide the facility or the purpose of hedging in the most cost efficient way against market risk. L. C. Gupta report which was submitted to the SEBI advisory committee which was finally accepted by the government of India and derivative trading was allowed in the Indian market. A derivative is a financial instrument or a financial contract whose value is derived from one or more underlying assets. The underlying asset of a derivative can be tangible assets like wheat, cotton or any other commodity and the intangibles like interest rates, weather or index etc or financial instruments like equity or bond. Derivatives have been included in the definition of securities after it has been decided to be introduced for risk hedging. Stock to be included in the derivatives market has to satisfy certain eligibility criteria. These are among the top 500 stocks are chosen for derivative contract. The stocks median quarter sigma order size over the last six months shall be not less than rupees 1 lakh. The market wide position limit in the stock shall not be less than 50 crore. Only eligible stocks as per the above mentioned criteria can be permitted for derivative trading. Derivative trading needs to be discounted in case stock does not fulfill the criteria for three consecutive months. Derivative contracts are permitted by SEBI. CB has introduced different derivative contracts which are given here. Index future contracts are permitted in June 2000 index options and stock options were introduced in June 2001 and July 2001 followed by stock futures in November 2001. Sectoral indices were permitted for derivative trading in December 2002. CB permitted mini derivative that is F and O contract on index Sensex and Nifty in December 2007. Longer tenure index options, contracts and volatility index in 2008. In August 2008, bond index was introduced. Features of the derivatives. Derivatives are the part of secondary market and no fund can be raised through derivatives. The transactions in the derivatives are settled by taking offsetting position in the same derivatives. No limit on the number of units transacted because there is no physical asset involved. Derivative market is quite liquid in nature. These are tailor-made instruments and its use depends upon investors' requirements. 
two purposes of derivatives. The first one is price discovery of the underlying asset. Prices are an organized derivative market reflect the perception of market participants about the future and lead the prices of underlying to the perceived future level. Price of the derivative coincides with price of underlying at the expiration date thus it helps in price discovery. Tools for risk management. Derivative instruments help in transfer risks through hedging from the hedger to the speculator. The derivatives can be over the counter or OTC, exchange traded or ETC. Over the counter. Privately negotiated securities are called over the counter contracts and are regulated by statutory provisions. It carries higher risk of default by any of the parties. OTC contracts are forward contracts, swaps like interest rate swap, credit default swap, options like stock options, warrants, currency options, credit default options. OTC have following features, non-standardized contracts and no formal rules or mechanisms for risk sharing. Management of counterparty is decentralized. It carries higher risk of default by any of the parties. Prices are less transparent due to uh, non-standardization, no restriction on time as they are private contracts. Most of the contracts result in physical delivery at expiry. Exchange traded contracts. They are standardized contracts traded as per rules and regulations of the exchange. Exchange traded contracts are future stock, bond, currency, options stock, index, currency or bond. The features. All ETCs are standardized with respect to quantity, price and time. Exchange authorities have strict surveillance over these contracts. All the contracts are guaranteed against the counterparty default. Positions can only be secured off at any point of time. Only few contracts may live up to the expiry and result in physical delivery. Participants and classification of derivatives market. Participants of derivative market. These are hedgers, speculators and arbitrageurs. The hedgers. One of the main purposes for which derivative trading has been initiated is to hedge or provide protection to the parties to the contract. Hedgers have risk exposure which they offset by a derivative and seek to protect themselves against price movements in an asset in which they have interest. For example, an American buying shares of an Indian company on an Indian exchange would be exposed to exchange rate risk while holding that stock. In order to reduce this risk, the investor could purchase currency futures of dollars to lock in a specified exchange rate for the future stock sale and currency conversion back into dollars. Speculators. Speculators are the participants who are ready to take risk in expectation of return. They take position in the market either expecting that the prices will go up for expecting that the prices will go down. They may go long or buy or short that is sell based on their expectations. However, they have naked positions and therefore they are inviting risk for earning a return. The speculators create volumes of trading in the derivative markets and hedgers and arbitrageurs get counterparty for other traders. The speculators create volumes of trading in the derivative market and hedgers and arbitrageurs get counterparty for their trades. The arbitrageurs, the arbitraging refers to locking in a risk less profit by simultaneously entering into true transactions in two different markets separated geographically or timing. The profit opportunities may occur due to price differences in two different markets but could not last for long due to arbitraging. Arbitrators may deal into cash and derivative market or only derivative market for different periods of time earning arbitrage profits. Their actions shall narrow down the differential in prices. For example, the arbitrageurs may buy in the spot market and sell in the future markets. Let us have a look at classification of the derivatives. These derivatives 
can be a financial commodity which are further divided into basics and complex and then we have forward swaps, futures, exotic options, warrants and convertibles. The distinction between financial and commodity derivatives is the difference in the underlying assets. In commodity derivatives, the underlying instrument is a commodity like wheat, cotton, sugar, pepper, turmeric, natural gas, gold, silver and so on. In a financial derivative, underlying assets are stock, T-bills, bonds, foreign exchange stocks, indices, etc. Let us have a brief introduction to forward contracts and the future contracts. The forward contracts. Forward contract is an agreement made today between a buyer and a seller wherein the seller is under obligation to deliver a specified asset of specified quality and quantity to the buyer on a future date and place is specified at a price agreed upon today. The buyer in return has to pay the seller a pre-negotiated price in exchange for the delivery. Forwards are non-marketable. Once a firm enters into a forward contract, there is no convenient way to trade out of it except that of reversing the trade between the same parties. For example, wheat farmer selling his harvest at a known price at a future date in order to eliminate price risk. The features of the forward contract. Forward contracts are not standardized form of contracts. They are over-the-counter transactions, not traded recognized exchanges. Every order is separate and is determined with respect to the contract size, expiration date, asset type and quality. The date and price of the contract is unique and decided in advance by the two trading parties. Future contracts are bilateral agreements and exposed to counter party risk. In forward contract, both the parties take the opposite position. One party agrees to buy the asset at specified price at the future date. It is said to have taken a long position Another party takes opposite that is short position, agrees to sell the same asset at the same date on the price agreed upon. A party without obligation of setting futures contract is said to have an open position. The benefits of the future contracts. Forward contract can be used to secure or hedge or lock in the price of purchase of asset on the future commitment date. For example, a bread factory may want to buy wheat forward in order to assist production planning without taking risk of price fluctuations. Price discovery is another use of forward prices to predict spot price that will prevail in the future. Also no cost is involved as margins are involved in forward contracts. It is entered into by two parties generally known to each other. The limitations of the forward contract. Forward contract have counterparty risk and in case of default by another party, the aggrieved party may have to suffer a loss. No party can take benefit of favorable price movements as clearing off is not possible in forward contracts. Forward contracts are illiquid contracts as it is difficult to get counterparty at one's terms. Future contracts. Any contract which is standardized involving two parties having an agreement to buy or sell an asset with a specific quantity or quality on a price which is agreed today for future delivery. Standardization of future contract. Underlying asset can be stock, commodity, interest rate, bonds, government securities. Settlement can be cash or physical delivery. The amount in units of the underlying asset per contract is specified. Delivery month and the grade in deliverable is specified. Last trading date is specified. Features of the future contract. Futures are standardized contracts that are to run in either the final cash settlement or asset are delivered at later stage. Certain future contracts such as stocks or currency settled in cash on the price differentials. For example, the futures of Reliance share can be traded on NSC and future of gold can be traded on MCX. These contracts trading on organized future exchanges with a clearing organization that serves as an intermediary between the parties. Both parties pay margin on clearing association and are generally settled by market to market every day. Each futures contract has identified a relevant month which is the month of the contract delivery or permanently settlement. 
these contracts are recognized with their delivery month for example futures of reliance in january can be future of january futures of february or futures of march for 1 2 3 months respectively future contract is different from trading and underlying stock in the sense that when you buy a stock you pay full value of the transaction that is the number of shares multiplied by market price of each share but in case of futures you have to pay margin there is no time component you own the stock for all times to come until you sell you make a loss or profit only when you sell the shares you own the difference between forward and futures contract here you can see the difference in the first column we have the forward contracts and in the second column we have the futures the forward contracts are private contracts between two parties while the futures are traded on an exchange the forward contracts are form of not standardized contract while the futures is a form of standardized contract the forwards are usually one specified delivery date while for the futures there is a range of delivery dates the forwards are settled at the end of the contract while the futures are settled daily the forwards have a delivery or final settlement as usual while in case of futures these are usually closed out prior to the maturity the forwards have some credit risk while on the futures we virtually have no credit risk when you trade futures long is equivalent of initiating a futures position by buying a future contract and securing up by selling it short is equivalent of initiating the position by first selling a future contract and then securing up by buying it back you pay only margin which is a fractional position of the total transaction value generally about 15% in case of index futures and up to 50% in case of individual stock futures all the future contracts are dated for example indian futures and option settlement takes place on last thursday of every month so the current month futures expire on the month's last thursday if the trader has to carry his position to the next month he has to shift his position to the next month future futures are generally traded using technical analysis because product facilitates speculation you can go long or short on futures depending upon the short term view of the market and or a stock the futures prices for a particular contract are the price at which you agree or to buy or sell it is determined by supply and demand in the same way as a spot price pricing of futures contract price of futures is the total of current spot price and cost of carry cost of carry is the interest cost of a similar position in cash market and carried to maturity of the futures contract less any dividend expected till the expiry of the contract simply it includes storage cost insurance cost transport cost and finance cost that is any interest foregone on funds used for purchase of the commodity spot price is the current price of the commodity price depends generally on the demand and supply of the underlying asset future price is the market's expectation of what spot price would be on delivery date on delivery date or on the expiry of contract future price equals spot price but prior to this the future price could be above or below spot price this difference is known as the basis that is basis is equal to future price minus spot price on expiry basis is equal to zero if the future price is greater than the spot situation is called contango and in reverse situation it is known as backwardization that is spot is greater than future price this usually happens when the cost of carry is negative or underlying asset is in short supply in the cash market and there is an expectation of the increased supply in future for example agriculture products future price is equal to current spot price plus cost of carry or f is equal to s to be multiplied with ert where f is the theoretical future price and s is value of the underlying index r is rate of interest and t is time of expiration examples the spot price of stock x is equal to 4000 interest rate is 12% per annum future price of one month contract is equal to 4000 plus 4000 multiplied by 0.12 
multiplied by 30 divided by 365 is equal to 4000 plus 40 is equal to 4040. The mechanism of pricing of futures can be explained as follows. Suppose in cash market underlying asset is selling at rupees 100. Expected return from the asset is 3% per quarter. Risk free lending borrowing rate is 2% per quarter. Price of futures will be 100 plus 100 into 0 0.02 minus 0 0.03. This will be equal to 99. Investor borrows funds to purchase one unit of asset X resulting in initial no initial cash outlay. At the end of three months period, rupees 3 will be received from holding the asset X and would be required to pay interest of rupees 2. In case of future contracts are available at rupees 92, the investor would buy one future contract for rupees 92 and sell one unit of asset at rupees 100 and invest money at rate of 8% per annum for three months. After three months, he will receive the proceeds of rupees 102 which is equal to 100 plus 2, he will spend rupees 92 to purchase an asset. Besides, he will not receive the yield of rupees 3 from the asset, so his cost is rupees 95. His gain would be rupees 7, that is 102 minus 95. If the future contract is rupees 107, he should sell the futures contract at rupees 107 and should borrow rupees 100 now to buy one unit of asset X in the spot market. After 3 months, his proceeds would be rupees 110, that is rupees 107 plus 3, and payment would be rupees 102, which is equal to 100 plus 2. He would be able to make a profit of rupees 8. Now, let us discuss about the clearing and settlement procedure in future and options at National Stock Exchange. Clearing and settlement procedure in futures and options at National Stock Exchange. National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited NSCCL is the clearing agency for all deals on the derivatives segments performed. NSCCL acts as the legal counterparty for all NSE, F and O segments and guarantees settlement. A clearing member or the CM of NSCCL has the task of clearing and settlement of all deals by trading members or TM on NSC. Foremost, the CM performs the following functions. The first one is clearing, that is computing obligations that all his TM to settle positioning. The settlement, performing actual settlement, only fund settlement is currently in the index and stock futures and options allowed. The settlement of futures in stock through delivery is proposed to be executed sooner or Indian stock exchanges. Risk management, setting position limits on basis of the advanced deposits or margins for each TM and monitoring of positions on a continuous basis. Types of clearing members, trading members, clearing members, a clearing member who is also a trading member, professional clearing member, professional clearing member is a clearing member who is not a trading member, self clearing members or SCM is a clearing member who is also a TM. Such CMs can clear and regulate only their own private transactions and their customers but cannot clear and settle trades in other TMs. Clearing member eligibility norms, clearing member eligibility standards, net worth of at least rupees 300 lakh, deposit of rupees 50 lakh to NSCCL is a part of the deposit of the CM, additional incremental deposits of 0 0.5 10 lakhs to NSCCL for each additional TM in case the CM agrees to clear and deals on other TM's behalf. The position in the future contract for each user is marked to market to the daily settlement price at the end of each trading day of the futures contract. Mark to market reduces the default risk of the parties as profits or losses are computed as a difference between the previous day's settlement price and current day's settlement price. Their daily is premium settlement takes place daily at NSC which is in cash. CMs are responsible to collect and resolve for the premium amount from the TMs and their clients clearing and settlement through them. The pay in and pay out of the premium settlement is on T plus one day their T stands for the trading day. The premium payable and premium receivable amount are debited or credited to CMs clearing bank account. 
final exercise settlement is affected for option positions at in the money strike prices existing at the close of trading hours on the expiration day of an option contract. Long positions at in the money strike prices are automatically assigned to short positions in option contract with the same series on a random basis. European exercise style is opted at NSC for index options contracts and options contracts. Exercise settlement is cash settled by debiting crediting of the clearing accounts of the relevant clearing members with respective clearing bank. Final settlement loss or profit amount for option contracts on index is debited or credited to the relevant CMs clearing bank on T plus one day where T stands for the expiry day. Final settlement of loss or profit amount for option contract on individual securities is debited or credited to the relevant CM's clearing bank account on T plus one day where again T stands for the expiry day. Open positions in option contracts cease to exist after the expiration day. The pay in or pay out of funds for a CM on a day are the net amount across settlements and all TM's clients in F and O segment. Type of the future contracts. We have stock index futures, we have commodity futures, then currency futures and then the interest rate futures. The stock index futures. A stock index future contract is a contract to buy or sell the face value of the underlying stock index where the face value is defined as being the value of index multiplied by the specified monetary amount. For example, in India, future contracts can be traded with Nifty or Sensex or some other indices as the underlying assets. In order to track the market, an investor should buy all the constituents of the market index in the same proportion in which these are present in the market index. With the availability of index futures, investors can simply buy or sell index futures or can track the market. However, it is a difficult proposition. Commodity futures. Future contracts on various commodities like agriculture product like grains, food commodity, textiles or metallurgical futures, contracts like gold, silver, platinum and copper have been in existence for nearly three centuries. Buying commodity futures saves on storage cost, insurance and wastage cost but at the same time one has to forego the convenience of having inventory ready. They are traded separately on commodity exchanges like NCDEX or MCX. Currency futures. Currency forwards and futures are very useful for those who are involved in international trade. Due to fluctuations in the exchange rate, it is important for traders to avail opportunities in the futures market to hedge exchange rate risk. Currency futures are standardized contract where an underlying asset is currency. These contracts are traded on a recognized stock exchange to deal in one currency against another on a specified future date at a price specified on the date of contract. In India, currency futures started in 2008 and are being traded at NSC and MCX SX. Guidelines by Reserve Bank of India regarding the currency futures. Only person resident in India are permitted to sell or buy currency futures to hedge an exposure to form exchange rate risk. Currency futures permitted in US dollar, Indian rupee and may be approved in other currencies from time to time. The size of each contract shall be 1000 US dollar. The contract shall be quoted and settled in Indian rupee. The maturity of each contract shall not exceed 12 months. The settlement price shall be Reserve Bank's reference rate on the last trading day. Interest rate futures. A futures contract whose underlying asset is the interest rate is called interest rate futures. As we know, there is always inverse relationship between interest rates and bond prices. A slight change in interest rate is reflected in the bond prices. Interest rate futures helps the investors to hedge against the bond price fluctuations. For example, an investor is holding government securities, expect that the interest rates would rise Consequently, the market price of securities would decline. In order to protect himself, he can sell futures and in case if he expects the interest rate to decline, he would buy the futures. In April 2003, SEBI announced a scheme for the introduction of exchange traded interest rate derivatives contract in India. NSC launched in June 2003 
which did not take off and again relaunched in 2009 after the guidelines of RBI for the trading of interest rate futures in India. IRF is a standardized interest rate derivative product to buy or sell national security or an index of interest rates at a specified future date at a specified price. In order to hedge against interest rate risk, any person resident in India can buy or sell interest rate futures. Foreign institutional investors are also allowed subject to certain conditions. Pay of positions in futures. These are going long buy futures, going short sell futures, long hedging and short hedging. Going long buy futures. When an investor enters in a contract by agreeing to buy at predetermined price, then he is anticipating increase in the future price and wants to make profit out of it. There is bullish outlook and buyer can make unlimited profit if the asset price rises. For example, suppose the price of wheat today is rupees 5000 per ton while the future price of the wheat which is to be delivered in 3 months is rupees 5500. The processor of grain chooses to buy futures at rupees 5500 expecting that the price of wheat will increase. Suppose after 3 months the price of the wheat increases to rupees 7000. The processor can now make profit and can sell futures which would be trading at rupees 7500 reflecting the physical market conditions. Going short sell futures. When an investor enters into a contract by agreeing to sell at predetermined price, then he is anticipating fall in the future price and wants to make profit out of it. By sell now at high price, the contract can be repurchased at a low price, thus making profit. The seller is expecting the price to fall and can have unlimited profit in that situation. There is unlimited risk involved in case the price rise. Long hedging. A company that knows that it is due to buy an asset in the future can hedge by taking a long futures position. This is known as long hedge. A long hedge is most appropriate when a company wants to lock in a price now of an asset which it is planning to purchase in future. For example, suppose that the tire manufacturing company estimates that it requires 1000 quintal rubber by June 15. The spot price of rubber is rupees. 5350 per quintal and June futures price is Rs. 5210 per quintal. The company can hedge its position by taking a long position in 10 June futures contracts and closing at position on June 15. The strategy has the effect of locking in the price of the rubber that is required to close at Rs. 5210. Suppose the price of rubber on June 15 is 5260 per quintal, the company gains from futures contract by 1000 multiplied by 5260 minus 5210 which is equivalent to 50,000. It pay rupees 52,60,000 for rubber. The total cost of the company is actually rupees 5210 per quintal. Suppose the price of rubber on June 15 is rupees 5050 per quintal. The company loses from its future contracts by rupees 1000 multiplied by 5210 minus 5050 which is equivalent to 160000. It pays rupees 5050000 ,50, for rubber. The total cost to the company is rupees 5,210 per quintal. Short hedging, long spot and short futures. A short hedge is one that involves a short position in future contract. A short hedge is appropriate when a hedger already owns an asset and expects to sell it at some future time. It can also be used that when hedger does not own assets but knows that asset will be owned at some time in future. Hedger has bearish outlook, prices are expected to fall. In case of price increase, loss on the spot position is offset by the gain on future position. In case of price increase, gains on the spot position is offset by the loss on future position. Let us recapitulate. Dr. Elsie Gupta committee 
came out strongly in favor of introduction of financial derivatives in order to provide the facility for hedging in the most cost effective way against market risks. A derivative is any security whose price is determined by the value of another asset. One of the main reason of existence of derivative is to hedge or provide protection to the parties to contract. Derivatives can be classified into financial and commodity contract. The basic difference between them is underlying asset. Financial contracts are further divided into basic and complex. Basics are futures, forwards, options, warrant and convertibles. Complex contracts are swaps and the exotics. Forward contracts are non-standardized form of contracts whereas futures are standardized contracts. The theoretical price of a future contract is sum of the current spot price and cost of carry. However, the actual price of futures contract very much depends upon the demand and supply of the underlying stock. Process of clearing and settlement at stock exchanges are clearly defined. National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited that is NSCCL is a clearing and settlement agency for all deals executed on derivatives that is futures and options segment at NSC. Mark to market reduces the default risk of the parties as profits or losses are computed as a difference between the previous day's settlement price and the current day's settlement price. Various future contracts like commodity futures, interest rate futures, stock index futures are available to hedge the risk against the price fluctuations.